Okay, good morning. Um, we're here today to discuss a lot of important topics as future nurses. One of the things that you'll be encountering are patients with a lot of conditions. And one of that is, of course, you're probably familiar with the word anemia, right? Does anybody know what anemia means? Yes? Low red blood cell count, right? So we'll start first with the easy concept today, which is called this oxygen transport, right? And this chapter deals with what cell? The red blood cell, right? If you know your anatomy, the red blood cell is also known as what? Erythrocyte, right? And therefore, as such, we know that it's produced where? Kidney. Where? Okay. Is it bone marrow or kidney? There you go. So is it important to know your anatomy? Because if you don't, you get what? What is L-O-S-T? You get lost, right? And if you cannot apply your anatomy background here, it's gonna be hard, right? So which bone marrow, red bone marrow or yellow bone marrow? Red. Okay. What does the yellow, the yellow bone marrow contain? Fat. What's the color of fat? Yellow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so amazing. If I were to die today, and if you were to dissect me, I'm a cadaver at UCLA, I'll be one of their specimens for my students there. They would say, OMG, Dr. G, you have so much what? Fat. fat. What do you think will be the color of this fat here? Yeah. Perfect. So the yellow bone marrow contains fat, so does it produce your red blood cell? No. So what's the color red bone marrow produces what? Yes. Is it only the red blood cell that's produced by the red bone marrow? No. What else would it produce? White blood cell. White, White blood cell, also known as? Leukocyte. What about your platelet? Yes, it does. And what is a plate? What's another name for platelet? There is none. It used to be called thrombocyte. What does thrombus mean? A clot. And what does site mean? So, is a thrombocyte a cell? Yes, it should. But is the platelet a cell? No, it's not. Why? Perfect. That's the word I want to hear. Fragment of what? There you go, I can tell who's studying. Fragment of what? What does mega mean? Big cell. Mega cardiocyte. Where did you learn all of these things? Anatomy and physiology again. So it's always, it always pays to what? Go back to your lectures, books. In fact, your book alone is already what? The review of anatomy. Are you aware of that? Every chapter has a preceding chapter that talks about normal what? Anatomy and physiology, right? So would I recommend that you read that too? Yes. Okay, what would the students say? Oh, Dr. Gamma, I'm really tired of reading all these five chapters, additional three more, four chapters. But it's an investment in what? Time, effort, because why? You learn more, the better for you, right? Okay, going back to the red blood cell. The red blood cell, as you said, is producing the red bone marrow. And apparently, it dies within how many days? 120 days. It's its destiny, you know? Me, I could live maybe 60 years, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be happy. I said that five years ago. Now I'm almost 60, I'm 57. Can it be 70? Not sure. Can it be a 90? Maybe. But the red blood cell has no choice. On the 119th day of existence, it starts to travel to where? Where does it die? What's the forest lawn cemetery of the... Exactly, it's called the Splenic Cemetery. On the 119th day, the red blood cell will start to... <laughs> Looking at his GPS called the Gamma Positioning System. Oh, I'm almost there. I'll be there to die. <laughs> to be or not to be to die or not to die. I have no choice, that's destiny. In this world, I can only live for 120 days. So why does this, why does the red blood cell have to die in the red blood cell, in the spleen? What will happen in the spleen to this, <laughs> the dead carcass of this red blood cell, yes? Filtration of the iron? Filtration of the iron? 
Hmm? So the red blood cell dies, right? What do you think happens to the, the body of the red blood cell? Hmm? Yes? I have not heard the word I always want to hear. There is the word I want to hear. Recycling and it's good for the cell. What is in the cell that can be recycled? Can you recycle the iron? Yes. Of course. The red blood cell. When it dies, it contains iron, right? And therefore, when it dies, you can recycle the iron, right? And what happens to this iron? It dies, it's in the spleen. Where is the next trip, vacation time for this? Where do you think are we going to bring the iron to? Where? Where? Huh? Kidney? Of course, the red bone marrow, where it came. Remember, the birthplace of the red blood cell is the red bone marrow. The death place, because there's such a thing as death place, is the what? The spleen. Just like anybody you want to be buried in your burial place would be what? Your birthplace. If I die, I would be buried in the place where I was born. 20,000 miles away from here. No, I don't know. I just, my, 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 my family probably just will cremate me and just throw me in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Worse, they could probably sell my body for $20,000 for medical education. That's a joke only, of course. So anyway, the bottom line is that the red blood cell will end up going back to the red bone marrow. So that, what, what do you think will happen if it goes back to the, uh, the, the iron will go back to the red bone marrow? So it can be used. Isn't that amazing? Nothing is wasted. Our body is a big recycling plant. Do you know that? Isn't that amazing? So the iron goes back to the red bone marrow. How? How? Yes. How can it go back? Is there, is there any Uber in our body and say, Uber, can you bring me to the red bone marrow? Well, how do you think the, the iron can be brought back from the spleen to the red bone marrow? Based on your extensive background of anatomy, my friend. Hepatic process. Hmm? Hepatic process. The what? Hepatic. Hepatic. Hepatic what? You know what hepatic means, my friend? Liver, right? Okay. It's okay. Does anybody know? Hmm? Huh? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin brings it there. Okay, chill, chill, relax. <laughs> Our body is made up of extensive 405 freeways, 405 north, 405 south, 91 east, 91 west. And basically, you have all the freeways there. What is that freeway I'm referring to? Huh? The blood vessels. This. So this is the freeways upon which the iron is brought to its final destination. From the spleen back to the red bone marrow where it was born. You understand what I'm trying to say? So it's not going to be any other thing. It's as simple as that. Where did you learn all of these? Anatomy and physiology. Does that mean that you have to have a very thorough foundation of nursing? You have to have a good background in anatomy? Definitely. Please, por favor. Again, I all want you to pass the nursing board exam. I'm like your father, you know, like Darth Vader. I am not your father, but I am your father. I want you all to pass and succeed, which means that you have to study hard, right? So this is now where the blood vessels will bring the iron back to where it's supposed to be, red bone marrow. So they can be used to what? Produce more, right? Now you mentioned about the kidney. What is the, what's the role of the kidney? Well, get rid of the waste, be and creatinine, yes? Okay, 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 relax, relax. Our, our topic is about red blood cells, right? So if this were a thread on Facebook, you concentrate and focus on the topic on red blood cell. Now I know you mentioned about filtration, which is good. Uh, blood pressure monitoring, fluid electrolyte monitoring and maintenance. But let's go back to our thread. Maybe it's my fault, I keep up coming up with all these jokes and distracting you with all these jokes just to keep you awake and alive. What is the role of 
I will be very specific with my question then. What is the role of kidney with regards to red blood cell production? How? Uh, Mr. Mr. Kelly Romero, yes? Why am I smiling at you right now? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? You said the word that I wanted to hear. What is that kidney produces that stimulates the red bone marrow to produce more red blood cells? What is it? What is it? Repetition is the mother of all retention. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? So what we're trying to say, therefore, is that the kidney produces erythropoietin to stimulate the red bone marrow to produce more what? Red blood cells. The bottom line is that if the kidney fails, what kind of anemia will you develop? Anemia due to chronic kidney disease. And what do you think Dr. Gamma will prescribe the patient? What will I tell the nurse? Nurse, give this patient what? Huh? Erythropoietin. Which one? The synthetic form or the natural form? The synth you know what the word synthetic means, right? Man-made. Does anybody know what's the name of this drug that we give to our patients, especially if you're in LVN or you work at uh, the dialysis centers, like the Vita? Mm -hmm. I know it, but I forgot. <laughs> Anybody who remembers? Leukochain? Hmm? Leukochain? Well, right? Procred. So these are the synthetic form. Yeah. Okay. No, anyway. Epogen. Epogen is one of them, yes, definitely. So the bottom line, therefore, is isn't that uh, so amazingly simple? In pathophysiology, if you know your anatomy and physiology that is normal, then you will not you will not be able to explain what? abnormal conditions or pathophysiology. And if you know that these patients who have chronic kidney disease cannot produce what? Erythropoietin, there is no way that you can stimulate what? The red bone marrow to produce what? So red blood cells to develop anemia due to chronic kidney disease. So you know the mechanism of injury or the pathogenesis, right? And what do we give these patients to treat them? The synthetic form of erythropoietin. So that's the beauty of acquiring the necessary knowledge and making sure you understand. And not only understand, but what? Retain, where? Here. In the learning process, you read by what? Your visual learning, auditory learning, you pay attention, take down notes. I know some of you are taking down notes, some of you are not because probably you have photographic memory. That's fine. But everything that comes out from my mother, I'm not saying it's important, but it must be important for me to spend 80 piece on talking about this thing, right? You understand? Okay. Now, the red blood cell, you mentioned about the hemoglobin, okay? And what exactly is hemoglobin? Hemo and globin, they're partners in crime. Yes, my dear, what is hemo and what is globin? What comes into your mind when you hear the word hemoglobin? What does hemo mean to you? Hema, hemo means what? blood, but what is in the hemoglobin that is the word him, him coming from? Remember the word him? The porphyrin ring. Does it ring a bell? Or the bell is too distant already? If you remember the, the, the structure of the hemoglobin, it's made up of two alpha and two beta chains of what? Globulin. What, is, what does globulin mean to you? It's part of your plasma one. I'll give you a clue. It begins with P, ends with M. Protein, huh? Protein. Who said protein? There you go. It's a plasma protein. Remember, albumin and globulin. Right? Okay? So it's made up of globulin proteins. Two alpha chains and two beta chains. Each of these chains have what? The hem made up of the porphyrin ring. And inside this porphyrin ring, how do you spell porphyrin? P-O-R-P-H-Y-R-I-N. Porphyrin ring has what? Iron. Iron. In other words, the hemoglobin can be able to what? Transport how many molecules of oxygen? All in all, if you have two alpha and two beta. Ms. Romero, you, good, or you are good in math because if you add two plus two, you can get what? 
Are natural supposed to be good in math? Yeah. Please, yes. <laughs> because you have to calculate my drug if I'm getting old and you become my nurse. And the doctor tells you give 1,000 milligrams every so and so, or 500 milligrams every eight hours. And the preparation comes in 1,000 you know, milligram preparation. So make sure you know, okay? Now, you mentioned about so in dealing with patients with anemia, there are many forms. So the idea here, class, is that you would say, Dr. Gamma, I'm overwhelmed. I was told to read five chapters. Just reading one chapter alone, it took me the whole day. <laughs> and I understand completely, uh, especially if you took an anti for a long time. Okay? So let's begin. There's a word called concept maps. Right? Um, concept map is like a map. What is the purpose of a map? A guide to reach your what? Destination. Google Maps, Yahoo Maps, the GPS or Global Positioning System, all of these are designed to make you reach your destination. But here, we want to reach our destination, which is to make you learn. Make sure that it's called smart studying and organized studying. Smart studying. Not everything that you read in the book is important, believe me. The only reason why the author have made sure that there are so many words that they can charge you more. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But in clinical practice, I don't expect myself to know all about the, all the medications and all these drugs and all this uh, pathogenesis, but I try to select which one is important and which one is not. So that is your what? Challenge. Which do you think is important to me as a, as a future nurse? One consideration would be what? Is it life-threatening? Can it kill your patient? Can it affect the quality of life of the patient? So we talk about airway, breathing, circulation. When you talk about circulation, you talk about blood. When you talk about blood, are you gonna talk about red blood cells? Yes, you can, right? So, anemia, as you said, is the decrease in the red blood cell. What is the opposite of anemia? Polycythemia, very good. So, let's start with, we already mentioned about anemia due to a chronic kidney one. Failure or disease, right? Okay. And we know the problem here. What's the problem here? Lack of what? Okay. We just talk about it, so don't forget. It's just been a one minute and 30 seconds ago. We can't <laughs> afford to forget. So what's the bottom line? No, take down notes. I see some of you looking at your cell phone, texting, you know. What should you do? Write it down. Okay? Unless, as I said, if a photographic memory, no need, right? So because the kidney produces what? Erythropoietin, and if the kidney fails, can it produce erythropoietin? No. no. So a decrease in this hormone or substance will not stimulate the red bone marrow to produce red blood cells. There will be lack of red blood cells. The condition is called anemia due to chronic kidney disease, and the treatment is giving what? Erythropoietin. Now, What's the most common type of anemia? OMG. Why would there be anemia if you have enough, if you do not have enough iron taken in by the body? It's very simple. In order to produce your red blood cell, what is inside the porphyrin ring? Iron. Which is just common sense, right? To produce something, you need the raw material. You need what? The globin, the globulin. You need what? The porphyrin ring. And most importantly, the iron, right? Without the iron, there will be no hema, hemoglobin, or red blood cell, right? So, most common. And what do you think we give these patients? Iron. <laughs> of course. It's called ferrous sulfate, right? What is the chemical symbol of iron? Fe. Okay. Is that clear? FeSO4. So I'm trying to because if you cannot see on my my video, then ferrous sulfate. Because Fe stands for iron. The thing about giving this to patients, what is it that you have to tell the patients when you give this drug to them? Change in the color. How did you know? Okay, there you go. Were you ever pregnant before? Were you ever pregnant before? 
Yes, you too? Okay, me too? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I've never been pregnant, but I know that if I give this to a pregnant woman, what is the side effect of taking iron supplements? Constipation. Constipation, but most importantly, there's a color in the change of your stool. What's the color, normal color of your stool? Golden, brown. yellow, brown. It's my favorite expression. Gold. Mm. <laughs> yellow. Mm. Brown. Mm. Sometimes greenish because of the bile. You know, Stercobilin from urobilinogen bile. Anyway. So you found out based on your personal experience, it turned black. So one of the things we always tell our nurses is tell your patients so that they don't get, oh my God! Oh my God! Dr. Gamo! My stool became black! Tell them ahead of time, ma'am, that's a side effect of the drug that you're taking, furosulfate. But make sure you ask the history. Is there any history of bleeding stomach ulcers in your case? None whatsoever. Then maybe it came from the drug, right? You understand what I'm saying? Very good. Okay? Now, what's another one that you can think of? Hmm? Okay, what about pernicious anemia, Ms. Romero? <coughs> What is lacking here? B12. Um, B what? B12. Vitamin B12. Does anybody know the other name for vitamin B12? Cyanocobalamin. 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 Like in cyanosis. C-Y-A-N-O. Cobalamin. Right? Now, can you explain the pathogenesis here, Ms. Romero? Because you were the one who gave me the answer. Of what? Uh, Again, I'm smiling at you. This young lady wants to get an A in this class and pass the nursing board exam. You want to pass the nursing board exam, Ms. Romero? Yes. You're better, okay? Because you have kids, right? You have a family. You need to pass this board exam and pay all your student loans, right? Yes. <laughs> I know. Okay? Now, what is the role of intrinsic factors there for? Anybody? Let's, let's give a... Uh, is Remer a chance to rest, yes? What is the purpose of having intrinsic factor? Mr. Ventura. Are you, what's your last name again? Velasco Ventura? Huh? Ventura? Okay, yes. Do you know? You forgot, okay. You were my former student, how can you? No, Miss Karen. No, oh, all right. Remember? Do you remember? So the, the reason why, 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 I'm, I'm, why do you think I'm asking all this thing? It's not because I want to humiliate you and make you, you know, look dumb or stupid, but it's my intention to make you think critically and say, what, got, what has got to do with intrinsic factor? Do, why, why do I need to memorize these things? What do most people do? They just simply memorize without what? Understanding what is for. I always ask you these things. Why, what, where, how, when? Red blood cell, where? Bone marrow, right? Okay, why do you need, do you need B12 to produce your red blood cell? Yes. yes. Okay, because there's no more time, I'll answer my own question. The intrinsic factor is designed to facilitate the absorption of what? B12, B12 in where? Hmm? Where? Okay, it's like this. Let's try to, to review the anatomy of the GI tract. Which part of the GI tract is important for absorption of nutrients? Miss yes. Romero. Were you my former student? Yes. Did you get an A in the class? Mm -hmm. You did? Yes. Oh, no wonder, okay. <laughs> You're exempted. I'll ask another one, okay? So, yeah, a person who gets an A in anatomy most likely will get an A here, I'm not kidding you. I'm not trying to say that if you got a B, you got a B here, most likely. <laughs> but can you get an A? Yes. What do you do? Study harder, do not sleep at night. No. no, I'm just joking. Of course, sleep at night and then wake up early in the morning, which I used to do in elementary school at not, four in the morning just to study, right? Okay, in other words, the small intestine to absorb the, the vitamin B12, you need intrinsic factor. Now, the big question, where do you produce this intrinsic factor then? Yes, the lady at the back, the one who's looking at me, all four of you are not except this young lady here. They're all busy looking at their, you know, Yes, what's your name? Me? No, 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 you. Elvira? Sophia. Sophia? Yes. yes. Okay, what was your 
Where is the intrinsic factor produced, my dear? Well, it's going to be able to uh, facilitate the absorption of the B12 there. But yes, yeah, somebody said something? Parietal cells, very good. Of what organ? Stomach, very good. The parietal cell, if you recall, produces what? Hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. Is that something very important? Very important. So please, I would strongly suggest and recommend you take the notes, okay? Intrinsic factor, rectal cell, stomach. That's where it's produced. What, what am I writing on my concept map? What am I writing there? Am I just writing the keywords? That's a, it's important to write keywords there, relevant words that you are supposed to what? Remember, so if I say, hi, my name is intrinsic factor. What do you think your answer be? What is your name? Your name is parietal cell. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What's your name? Hi, my name is Intrinsic Factor. I'm parietal cell. Thank you so much. Okay? No, I want you to grab her hand. One to your back. Okay, her name is what? What, what do you think should her, huh? Stomach. Okay, stomach. Very good. Uh, she came up with a good name, okay? So we're now all related, huh? So we share hands. We'll hold two hands together. Hi, my name is Intrinsic Factor. What's your name? Parietal And what is? Okay, so do you understand what I'm saying? So you think of a word that is related to another word because it's linked by what? Relationships. Well, like we're sisters and brothers and whatever, cousins, right? So if I ask you now, where is the intrinsic factor produced? Bam! Right, so bam! Stomach. Stomach. And there's no way you will forget until you die. You're converting short term memory to what? Short term to? Short term to? Short term to? Any exam you take from now on will what? Perfect. I assure you, perfect. No mistake. I can't. No pressure on you, okay? You do your best. <laughs> okay. So the bottom line, therefore, is that can you think of any other form of commonly anemias? Hmm? Oh, there you go. I, I like that word. Plas a plastic, not plastic, huh? A plastic. Can anybody tell me what is the anemia called a plastic anemia? Is it stem cell disorder? Huh? Is it stem cell disorder? With stem cell disorder. With low um, red blood cells, white blood cells, and white blood cells. Okay, I like that answer. And what do you call that if you have? Low red blood cells called anemia. What about if you have low white blood cell? Yes? Leukopenia. Is it leukemia or leukopenia? leukopenia? Don't get confused. In fact, leukemia is actually what? Hi. And leukopenia is? Leukopenia is? There you go. So can you imagine if you're taking a board exam and you have two words, leukemia and leukopenia? And you were supposed to choose? And they're both opposite, right? Yeah. What the heck? You could, it takes only one exam in the nursing board exam to fail the exam, believe me. Why do I know all these things? Because I came up with a nursing review for eight years. After answering that question, the computer stops. That was the question that determined your fate. <laughs> if you came up with the right answer, bang. Congratulations, you get a piece of paper that's small. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If you fail, you get this long, big letter because it will tell you which one are your mistakes and your, you know. I'm not sure if it's being done now because I'm not, I'm a nurse. I just reviewed nurses, even though I was not even a nurse. <laughs> I just needed the money, okay. You understand? Very good. Now, what about low platelet count? Very good. Sophia, you're absolutely right. Anything below 150,000 is thrombocytopenia. And you know that the platelet is for what function? Plotting. Plotting. So if your platelet count is lo low, what happens now? Bleeding. Your blood will not clot, you will bleed to what? Bleed to? Yeah. Rest in? Yeah. Six feet? Under the? Yeah. Permanent resident at forest? Yeah. Cemetery. Okay? <laughs> so if you lack platelet, what do you think Dr. Gamma will give you? Yeah. Of course, platelet! Concentrate! <laughs> to love anatomy and medicine. That's the reason why I went to medical school. 
out of 20,000, I had to compete with 20, a lot thousands of people going to med school because I said, I need to go to med school because it's so simple, so easy. Just like you, you competed with so many people. You went to nursing school, why? Because it's so easy. It's your frame of mind, right? If you think it's easy, it's gonna be. If you think it's difficult, it's gonna be. So think easy, you know? And it can only be easy if you really what? Study hard, right? Okay, do you understand? So, everything is low. Now what is the term used to describe when red blood cell count is low, anemia? Platelet count is low, thrombocytopenia. WBC count is low, it's called leukopenia. What's the term we use? Very good. Pancytopenia. So, I, I remember I told you this before, I'm not sure if it's the first day of class. When you learn something new, it's like gold mining. When you do gold mining, you go to the river banks and what do you do? You have a shifter to get. Get rid of the pebbles and rocks which you don't need and what do you need to get? That's something that's yellow and golden yellow that is what? Sparkling with a ray of sunlight, you know? And that's the gold. Now these are the gold words, golden words that I expect you to know. So that's the gold that you want to know. I remember last term I was using the gold and the analogy I gave. And one student said, complained, Dr. Gamo, how do I find the gold? I've been doing this in the riverbanks of West Coast, you know, <laughs> trying to shift. I read the book, I don't even know what is gold. Okay, I tell the student. Remember I told you this, if it's an anatomy book, at the beginning of its chapter, or in here, it's outline. In the sum of the books, they have at the, begin, at the end of this chapter, the student must be able to define pathophysiology. They're able to define signs and symptoms. So that alone, which one is the goal there? Pathophysiology, pathogenesis, and then what? Signs, symptoms. Signs, objective. Right? Symptoms, subjective. So those are golden words. So I'm not talking about the gold, the shining gold, but I'm talking about golden nuggets of wisdom. I think that's a very appropriate analogy, golden nuggets of wisdom. The smarter you become, the more gold you have where? Here. Is this gold? Can you do this without looking at your notes? You should. Do I recommend that you buy a whiteboard at home? You should. I can give you a discount. I'm a businessman. I have this online business now, you know. I'm just joking. Buy this. Go to Walmart. I think it's around $18 or Costco. A big one like this here. Because you can do, now can you imagine if you do what I did here, and what do you do next? Erase, and then what, do again. Pretend that you have a class. Or you can tell your five-year-old son. No, just don't do it because they'll be bothering you. Okay, mommy, mommy, I want me, okay. <laughs> lock yourself inside the room. Exactly. You lock yourself inside the room, and then pretend that you have a class of 30 students or 100 students, you know. Class today, we're gonna talk about anemia. You know what anemia means? In the red blood cell. Do you know what the red blood cell is for? Red bone marrow. Do you know what the reproducibility <laughs> Why do you think you need to do this as often as possible? That it becomes what? Long term memory. You understand? Is that clear? Okay, now. So they say aplastic anemia, I, I remember this because it was very common during my time in med school was produced by the fact that you were exposed to what? Pesticides, insecticides. I remember in my time there was this uh, pesticide called malathion sprays, and not people, everybody knew about the possibility of you developing what? So plastic anemia. So sometimes when we get the medical history of the patient, we ask, was there any time that this patient was exposed to this, this, and that? Now because, the, so where is the problem here? Where? So how, where, when, where? In the red bone marrow. The chemicals that I have mentioned, these harmful toxic substances, will completely destroy your what? Exactly, when you completely destroy the red bone marrow, you have what? All the cells affected. Red blood cell, white blood cell, and platelet. Do you understand class? Okay, is that clear? Okay. Now, we move on to the next topic, which is basically blood flow, right? Now, Are you familiar with this formula? Q is equal to P over R. What does V represent? Blood flow, very good. Blood what? What about P? 
Pressure. Pressure delta or gradient. What about R? Resistance. Resistance. So what is the relationship between blood flow and resistance? Direct proportion or inverse? Inverse. inverse. What does inverse mean? <coughs> if you increase resistance, what will be the effect on blood flow? Decrease blood flow. Right? I'll give you an example. In the coronary arteries, like for example here, this is the heart. This is the aorta. The coronary arteries, there are mainly two. One on the left and one on the right. If you start to have fat deposits here, when the blood flows to the arteries, like this, will that presence of fat deposits there called plaque offer resistance to flow? There you go, okay? So decreased resistance, uh, increased resistance, decreased blood flow. What happens to the blood flow in the myocardium? Decreased blood flow. What do you call decreased blood flow? What's another word for decreased blood flow? It's called ischemia. So is this patient suffering from ischemic heart disease? Will this patient manifest with chest pain? Remember, pathophysiology? Manifestations, one of the questions in the discussion board. History, chief, chief complaint, right? Okay. Remember the word hydropic swelling? The lack of ATP due to ischemia, but it's not dead yet because infarct is irreversible. Hydropic swelling is reversible. Now, do you understand? Now, are you familiar with this formula? R is equal to A and L over pi R to the fourth. It's called the what? Bosell's law. Did anybody encounter this word or formula? Raise your hand. I'm, I'm doing a survey. How many of you have encountered or read this formula? Raise your hand. Be honest with me. A what? This formula. Did you read this? Encounter this in your readings? Okay, I see one hand, two hands, three hands. Okay, did you bother to determine what is this formula for? Is there something important? Again, only four hands? What happened to the rest? You never encountered this formula? In fact, this is the most important formula aside from this. I'll tell you why. What does the end represent? Viscosity of the blood. What about the L? Of the blood vessel, like in this case, arteries. And what about R? So how many powers? Four. So of all the factors involved, which one is the most important factor? Mr. Romero, I just told you <laughs> you're good in math and you forgot R to the fourth is lesser than L to the one. <laughs> or R, you know. So the bottom line, therefore, it's radius. So what do I mean by that? I'll give you an example. What is the relationship between resistance? This is R for resistance, right? Remember the word resistance here? And resistance there? What is the relationship between resistance and radius? Direct proportion or inverse? Again, inverse. What is the meaning of that? If you increase the radius, the small r, it's a big R. What page is this in the book? Can anybody tell me? Anybody? What page is this in the book? Go ahead, take a look. That you can say that I'm not talking about something that's not in the book. So if you increase radius, what happens to resistance? Decrease R resistance, increase radius, decrease resistance. And if you decrease resistance, what happens to the blood flow? increases blood flow. In other words, if you decrease resistance, or R, the effect would be what? Increase with blood flow will increase. So believe me, is this formula important? Was somebody able to find it in which page of the book? What page? 314. And what chapter is this? 15. Chapter what? 15. And what page? 314. What page? There you go. I didn't get this from the cloud or Google Cloud or something. I got this from the book, right? 
So it's now your ability to determine which one is important, which one is not. Is this formula important? Believe me. And anything happens to our body, these two formulas are so important. What is the implication here? Resistance is equal to 8NL, N for viscosity, L for length of the blood vessel, over pi R to the fourth. Now you notice, how is it written in your book? Can, you, can I borrow your book, my dear? So eight, is it 314 you said? Okay, Where, oh there you are, you have encircled it. Did you do it only now or you did it last time? Uh, I just circled it, I highlighted it earlier. You highlighted it and you encircled it one second ago. How many of you take down notes from the book? Would I recommend that? Maybe. But don't spend too much time rewriting it and then not studying it, you know? I remember one time there was a student who made sure he, he, he took down notes. But the thing is you now no longer have enough time to memorize them. And she still wasn't doing well, right? Okay. There you are. You see, resistance is equal to what? Now, how many of you have brought your book with you? How many of you did not bring your book? Be honest. Obviously, you did not raise your hand a while ago, the place you did not, right? Okay, there you go. Process law, right? Okay, everything is there, okay? So the bottom line is, it's a fraction. Again, inverse, direct proportion. So what is the meaning of this? If you increase viscosity, you increase resistance. Increase resistance, what happens to the blood flow? Decrease. If you increase the length, the longer the blood vessel, what happens to resistance? Increase. What happens if you increase resistance? Decrease. You decrease the blood flow. Nothing cannot be explained, therefore. You understand? Now, I'll give you an example. Thank you for your book. Now, a patient suffering from chest pain due to what? Fat deposits in the coronary arteries. What do you think Dr. Gamma will give this patient? A coronary 8th artery vasodilator or vasoconstrictor? Okay, why? When you vasodilate, you make the smooth muscles what? In the tunica media what? Relax. And when they relax, you have vaso what? Remember in a blood vessel, you have three layers. Tunica intima, made of endothelium, which is smooth. Tunica media, made of smooth muscles. M for media, M for muscle. And what's the third layer? Adventitia. Adventitia or externa, made of connective tissue. So what is the middle layer? Muscle. Can the muscles contract? Yes. Vasoconstriction. Can the muscles relax? Yes. Vasodilation. Is that very basic? Yes. yes? So, remember those drugs, nitroglycerin? We give it under the tongue, sublingual. We give, give it in the form of a medication patch, skin patch, in front of the chest, okay? Now the question is, how does it get to the coronary artery? Very simple. Are there any blood vessels here? Of course. Lingual artery and veins. What about blood vessels here? Yes, the thoracic arteries, internal thoracic arteries, and veins, and intercostals. So it now travels the freeway, and that freeway will bring it to the final destination, which happens to be what? So what does this drug do? Dilate. The vaso dilate because it makes the smooth muscles relax, and will that increase the radius? Yes. So if we increase, increase the radius, what happens to the resistance? Decrease. What happens if you decrease the resistance? What happens to the blood flow? There will be more blood flow. What is the problem in patients with fat deposits? Decreased blood flow and resulting in ischemia. By giving the drug, am I solving the problem of decreased blood flow? Because when you vasodilate, you decrease the resistance, you increase the blood flow, problem solved. Will that patient no longer complain of chest pain? Yes. Can you call this drug nitroglycerin anti-anginal medication? Yes. Of course, it's called anti-anginal because what does anti mean? Against chest pain medication. What is angina? Chest pain. Are you following me? Is that difficult to understand? I hope not. I'm your GPS, I'm trying to guide you. I'm the GAMO positioning system to guide you in one direction. You said the name of a band, One Direction. <laughs> to that you will what? Learn and apply what you have acquired. 
The key concept here is that you acquire the necessary knowledge, but you have to understand what you acquire and be selective. There are so many things in your book. Some of them are trash. And where do you put trash? In the trash can. There? What's that there? Trash can. Like, a, you know, in your, in your computer, I'm not, I'm not an IT guy, but it's called the bin, right? You delete whatever, you know? You understand? Is this something you need to throw at trash? No. Very important, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, what about viscosity then? We talked about viscosity and length. The viscosity is increased. Resistance is increased. Length is increased. Resistance is increased. Direct proportion. It's the radius that is inverse. Increased radius, decreased resistance. Decreased resistance, increased blood flow. In other words, what I'm trying to say, therefore, is that if you know these two formulas, oh my gosh, you become an expert on blood flow. It's physics, biophysics. You understand? Is that clear? Now, the question is, if I give nitroglycerin, will that affect the coronary arteries? Yes, we did. We said it can, right? What about the peripheral arteries? Arteries here, arteries there. Yes, of course, because it goes into what? The freeway. The freeway is not only confined. When I say freeway, I'm talking about the blood vessels everywhere, right? The blood vessels are not only found in, confined to the heart, it's also found where? So what would be the effect if you vasodilate an artery on the blood pressure? It will lower the blood pressure. When you vasodilate, you increase the blood flow, but the effect would be what? Hypotension, a lowering of the blood pressure. So what do you think will I tell the nurse to do when I tell the nurse for angina, PRN, what is PRN? As needed, give what? Nitroglycerin, five milligrams of lingual. But WOF, what does WOF mean? Watch out for a drop in the blood pressure by let's say 20 or 50, 20 milliliters, millimeters mercury of what? Systolic pressure, for example. When you gave the drug, the, the blood pressure systolic was 120. And then when you give nitroglycerin, it went down to 100. It's a, a significant drop from 120 to 100 systolic. Yes? Are you going to call me and say, Dr. Gamo, I gave the drug, and are you going to document this, remember? Yeah. Remember the, the discussion board? Signs and symptoms? Characteristic disease? Yes. Proper documentation is important. 6 a.m. Gave nitroglycerin sublingual, 5 milligrams. Baseline vital signs, 120 over 80. Blood pressure, heart rate, 80. Respiration rate, 12 per minute. By 7 or 6.15, after 15 minutes, the blood pressure started to drop from 120 to 110. And eventually, after 30 minutes, it went down to 100. You can call me, Dr. Gamo. This is Nurse Kelly. I want to inform you that we gave nitroglycerin to the patient. There is a significant drop from 120 to 100. What do you think will I tell this nurse? Hmm? Well, first of all, if it's really significantly dropped, then you can maybe lift the leg and everything. But is it because of the drug? Yes. So what do you think I tell Kelly now? Are we going to change the dosage? Yes. From 5 milligrams to 2.5, maybe, right? Yes. Now, with 2.5, it still went down. I may have to ch think of another drug. You understand what I'm saying? So we talk to each other. And I know you're smart, I have to be smarter than you. I'm not saying doctors are always smarter than any nurse, but you know, they have to be. They're the one giving the orders, my God. They have to be smarter than anybody else in that team, right? You understand? You understand why? Because it had a side effect, which is to lower the blood pressure. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, now, is that clear? So that's blood flow. Now. When we talk about blood flow, therefore, we, we have to know these two formulas. In fact, in terms of uh, this, we, we have to be sure that you understand that if a patient has high blood pressure, what kind of drug are you going to give to lower the blood pressure? A vasodilator or a vasoconstrictor? Of course, because you know what vasodilation does. It lowers your blood pressure. Can you imagine if you're taking the nursing board exam and you answered, I will give a vasoconstrictor? What did you do? What? What? You might have killed your patient. What? You could kill them. What? <laughs> repetition is the mother of all retention. You came up with the wrong answer to the nursing board exam question, and you have potentially what? 
So when I tell nurses when I was doing the review, your answer was wrong, you just killed the patient. It was telling you that if you did that to your patient, you could have killed the patient. And that's the reason why you don't pass the exam because you came up with the wrong choice in your, even though it's multiple choice questions. But the, the, the way you think is the way you will act eventually when you become a future nurse. The way you think, what is in there is how you will act. Okay, Dr. Gamma, I'm gonna give a basic constrictor to this patient. The blood pressure is 200 over 100. Okay, go, get, get. And let's pretend I'm, I'm... You gave a drug, a basic constrictor. After 15 minutes from 200, it went to 220. Hypertensive crisis and emergency. The patient had a ruptured artery in the brain. Bang! Died because of hypertensive bleed with increased intracranial pressure. What caused the death of this patient? Nurse. 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 And what is called nurse induced death, NID. I'm just joking, there's no such thing. There's also a DID, doctor induced death, because are there stupid and doctors in the world? It's really sad, right? Anyway. Now, blood flow. We talk about, there, there were a lot of conditions there, but uh, I think one of the most important ones is about what? Atherosclerosis. What is atherosclerosis? Hardening of, okay. Hardening of the arteries. Why? Because they deposit on the wall, they attach to the tunica intima, which is made up of smooth endothelium. It now becomes rough, right? And the hardening is that's why it's called sclerosis. Sclerosis is a word which means hardening, okay? And I think there's a nice dis discussion there on how it happens, right? and the formation of that core plaque and everything. Very nice discussion. The idea here is that uh, when a patient walks with the atherosclerosis, we have what they call claudication. What is claudication? Pain of the leg because of prolonged walking because of what? Atherosclerosis in the leg, okay? Now, what about veins? Now, remember arteries and veins have the same layers, tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia. But the wall of the artery is much thicker, right? And the pressure is much higher. That's the reason why that is how the blood flows, pressure gradient. The blood will always flow from veins to arteries. Why? I mean, from arteries to veins, because the artery has what? Higher pressure compared to veins, right? You understand? Okay. You understand? Okay, now, with regards to this, try if you notice this diagram here, arteries, capillaries, then veins. What do you call the small artery? Arteria, what do you call it? Small vein? And what's formed between the two? Capillaries. capillaries. And what is the capillary made of? Squamous cells, flat cells. And only one red blood cell can go through. And the capillary is found everywhere. So you can have a cell. What kind of cell? Any cell. Brain cell, muscle cell, bone cell on both sides, right? Remember, what does the red blood cell carry here? Oxygen. So the oxygen, what is diffusion? From high to low. From high and that is diffusion. From high concentration to low. Because the cell needs oxygen to produce ATP in the mitochondria. And what does the cell produce as waste? CO2. CO2 is waste, no need. From high to low. Now I remember, if I remember if you took anatomy with me, I compared the red blood cell to what? A red bus. Who is the passenger of the red bus in the arterial? Oxygen. What happens when the red bus reaches the capillary? What does it do? It opens the door and kicks out one. Hey, oxygen, time to disembark. Okay. And then who is the new passenger now? CO2. CO2. And where does CO2 go? To the venules, right? Mm -hmm. Now remember, this is the right atrium, right ventricle. What blood vessels bring blood to the right atrium? <laughs> Superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Where did this come from? The superior vena cava brought blood from the veins of what? Head, neck, and upper what? Limbs. What about the inferior vena cava? Lower limb veins, the thigh, the leg, and even any organ below the chart, right? So lower what? Limb veins. What else? Thoraco, pelvic organs, abdominal pelvic organs. All the venous blood will go there. Now, with regard to veins, what does thrombophlebitis mean? Thrombus means clot. What about phlebo? Vein, what is itis? Okay. Now, what causes people to develop thrombophlebitis in nursing home patients? Hmm? 
They're bedridden, they're immobilized, yes. So what could have prevented this? Exercise. In order to prevent thrombophlebitis, what caused it? Prolonged immobilization, the lack of exercise. You need to exercise them. So it will not develop. Now what happens if it's already there? Are you going to exercise the leg? Why? So the thrombus, which is stationary, attached to the wall of the veins, the leg veins are here, it's attached, it's called the thrombus. Can it become, a, what's an embolus? A traveling clot. So can it be this clot, can it travel from the saphenous vein to the femoral vein, and then inferior vena cava to the heart? Does it stop in the veins, in the vena cava? No. Why? Because there are big blood vessels, the vena cava. What about the right atrium? No, why? It's a big chamber. What about the right ventricle? No, it's a big chamber. What about the pulmonary trunk? No, it's a big trunk. What about the lungs? Yes? yes. yes? yes. Because it has what? Pulmonary what? Capillaries. capillaries. If you remember, the capillaries are so small, only one red blood cell can go through. Now, what happens if you have a blood clot there? Pulmonary it gets stuck. It's called pulmonary what? So can you develop pulmonary embolism secondary to a blood clot in the leg veins? Yes. Really sad. And how do you know? When you start exercising the leg of the patient, which you were not supposed to do, after 10 minutes, guess what? Huh? Nurse, I can't breathe. I have chest pain. Huh? And you tell the patient, sir, I'm sorry, you have pulmonary embolism, you will die. <laughs> and I will lose my license. I was not supposed to exercise you. I'm just being sarcastic, of course. Yes, ma'am. No, vitamin K is for bleeding. Okay. okay, nothing to do with this. So in, 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 in patients like this, what is the drug of choice for thrombus formation? Okay, so this is very important, very important. I want you to be able to differentiate heparin and coumadin or warfarin are what? Okay, is there a word blood thinner in your book? There you go, anticoagulant, I'm just kidding. Uh, and, and what does an anticoagulant do? Prevent what? More clot formation. What's the key word? Prevent more clot formation. What's another drug that we can give? Because the clot is already there. What do you need to give to dissolve the clot? Thrombolytic drug. Thrombo, from the word thrombus. Lytic, L-Y-T-I-C. What does it do? It breaks down the clot, breaks down the clot. So most of this ends with ACE, like streptokinase, strepto, streptococcus, streptokinase, abokinase, urokinase. Now, remember in MI patients, what happens? Fat deposit, they have a blood clot there. Can you give a thrombolytic drug if you have a blood clot that completely blocks to develop MI or infarct or necrosis? But the thing is, you have to give it in the first how many hours? Three to six hours, but the, the golden period is first three hours. Anybody with chest pain, are you going to bring them to the emergency room right away? Yes. You go beyond three hours, the damage becomes permanent, that muscle becomes necrotic. The chances of recovery will be poorer. So whenever your loved one will say, oh honey, I have to bring you to the ER, and if they say, no, it's okay, why don't we wait for tomorrow? You wake up, he's already dead. So make sure you bring them right away, okay? The same thing with the clot in the brain. Now, so thrombolytic is not the same as anticoagulant. Now what about aspirin? Does anybody know what is aspirin? Anti what? Well, it's an anti-inflammatory, but it's not a steroid, remember? Non-steroidal, but it's an anti-inflammatory. What else? In relation to clotting. Hmm? Normally, the, we, the word blood thinner is more or less used for heparin and warfarin. I don't think we normally use blood thinner for aspirin. And I don't even try, I, I don't recommend using the word blood thinner because it doesn't really make the blood thin and fat, you know? The word blood thinner is used by laymen, but you're not laymen. You're not ordinary people. You're, you're important people. You're, you're the best. Okay, we already said anticoagulants will make, prevent more clot formation. Thrombolytic drug will dissolve the clot. What about your platelet? Anybody? Anybody remembers? Okay, because there's no more, I'll answer my question. It, remember when you have a wound, 
Is it your artery here or blood vessel? And you have a wound there, what happens? There's an opening, there's a break in the wall. What happens to the blood inside? It goes out, that's why you're bleeding. What do you think the platelet will do? The platelet is a fragment of a cell. They form a what? A plug. The platelet will gather, holding hands, I'm just kidding. Come on, platelet number one, and platelet number two. Oh, come on, platelet number three, platelet number four. Let's go together right now. Let's plug the wall. Let's plug the wall. So they all come together. I'm not kidding, it's true. They sing to each other. And they will what? They form a what? A defensive wall. It's called platelet what? Aggregation. Aggregate. The platelet will what? Aggregate. To form the plug. To seal off what? The break in the wall. But in other words, it has a different action, mechanism of action compared to your what? Thrombolytic drugs compared to what? Anticoagulants. And if you can go, I, I know the answer, but you might want to do research on this. Like Kepler, what is the mechanism of action? What does it do? Like with regard to fibrin, fibrin plasmin, plasminogen. What about your warfarin? They're not the same, right? Warfarin is also known as coumadin, okay? So the idea here is that the platelet will aggregate. Is that clear? Okay. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So in, in there was a chapter on hemostasis. I didn't want to do detail on that because it's, it's about thrombocytopenia and all this clotting mechanism. The bottom line is that in the nursing board exam, you have, may have to do that normal ratio, ITR and all these things, PTT, partial thromboplasty in time. But because of the amount of materials you need to cover, I don't have the time to discuss that with you. Okay? But I strongly suggest you read on that part. Partial thromboplasty in time, Bleeding time, you know, prothrombin time, and all these things, okay? The idea, therefore, is that you need to know all these things, okay? We'll move on to the next chapter in a short while. Let's have a short break. Oops.